Okay. Uh, uh, we see the slide show presentation. Not the... Oh, that's a problem. Uh, is it okay if I just do it like this? Can everybody see it? Okay. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, the Neotoma Testate Amoebae database, uh, what we've been up to. Um, I'm going to assume that everybody knows what a test state amoeba is. So we're talking about a subgroup of amoeba that form a morphologically distinct shell. Uh, so this is what the data looks like in Neotoma. Um, essentially, there are sort of two sub databases here. Uh, one is uh, surface samples. Uh, and so these are uh, modern test state amoeba communities and associated measurements of, of things like water table depth and pH. Uh, and, then, and then stratigraphic uh, records. Uh, in terms of stewardship, uh, the surface, uh, and, it's, and I guess in terms of the numbers here, the surface sample data set is now up to 257 sites, uh, over 4,500 samples. Um, sort of the progression here is we started uploading these uh, sites back in 2019, mostly focusing first on North America. Uh, the European data was uploaded then by the end of 2020, and then we tackled a the Asian data in 2021. Um, and then you can see the stratigraphic samples on here. There's approximately 100 data sets that have test data maybe, although these, these include both lakes and peatlands, whereas uh, all of the surface samples are from peatlands. Uh, and uh, a number of those samples in there are just uh, kind of anecdotal uh, occurrences of test data maybe uh, along with, with pollen analysis. Uh, but we've been focusing mostly on the upload of peatland sites since about 2020, uh, and mostly that's just been community driven as people uh, publish and want to get their data uh, onto Neotoma. Since then, in 2022, we kind of shifted uh, shifted a bit to try to do some science, uh, and uh, really with kind of this overarching goal of sort of demonstrating the potential of the database to the broader test state amoebae uh, research community. So a couple of things that we've been doing is uh, just last fall, we submitted a NSF NERC uh, proposal, uh, and uh, that's being led by Julie LaSalle. Uh, and uh, 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 fingers crossed that that's funded, but we will be using uh, the Neotoma test data amoebae data and, uh, and actually adding a lot of sites uh, to, uh, to the database as well. And then probably our biggest activity over the past year has been the development of a review and, and sort of meta-analysis and synthesis paper. Uh, and uh, we are nearing completion on this. So I thought I'd share uh, just some of what we've been putting together. Uh, and so, so basically what we're trying to do here is synthesize all of the published test date amoebae sites, both modern samples and stratigraphic samples. And uh, uh, no one has done this so far. So it's uh, it's quite an undertaking to pull everything that's been published together. Uh, and of course, we're trying to do some science with it. But along the way, there's, there's sort of fundamental neotoma related questions like, how much is there left to do? And, uh, and where should we focus our efforts? And so what's shown here is basically all of the published test data, maybe calibration studies. And you can see their distribution there by, by latitude. And so this is the data from Neotoma. And uh, if you compare them, we have about 66% of the published surface samples uh, now in, in Neotoma. Okay, so what we're doing in this paper is first we're taking a site-based approach to try to look at what the regional sort of, what, what are the controls on test state amoebae communities. Uh, and so we've gone through all of these papers and, uh, and looked at what was identified by the authors as the primary environmental controls and secondary, et cetera. And then sort of summarized, uh, summarized that pattern along a gradient from bogs to sites that include more, uh, more rich friends and things like that. And those of you that know something about test data media, it's not surprising, but hydrology comes out as really important in bogs. But as you become sort of more nutrient rich uh, in, in your site selection, then other factors start to play a role. So we're doing that at the site level, and then we're bringing in Neotoma to take a look at, well, what does all the data look like together, right? And so 
I don't expect you to wrap your head around this completely, but here's a here's a giant ordination of all of the modern samples in in neotoma, and then looking at correlations between water table depth and pH in this larger data set. And so, although it's a bit noisier than the individual studies, the patterns still still hold up even when you combine data from the entire uh, northern hemisphere. And so, you can actually take that and develop a northern hemisphere transfer function uh, uh, using test data maybe that could be applied to, to paleo studies. Okay, the other thing that's obviously emerging is that there's some big holes, and so particularly in the southern hemisphere. So we've started another project working with, uh, with the folks that have collected uh, data in, in South America. So that includes myself, Graham Swindles, Julie Lossell, uh, Simon Van Bellen, uh, some of Dan Sharman's uh, old data as well. And we currently have all of that data in hand uh, and uh, a number of figures uh, developed. And the hope is to finish up this paper and then upload the, uh, the, these sites to Neotoma in the context of that paper. This is what the stratigraphic records look like. Uh, this is, was actually a major undertaking to pull together all of the stratigraphic records. I was actually surprised at how many there were. Uh, so uh, there's 293 sites represented here, uh, spread out over 222 publications. And so we've now gone through all of these and sort of classified sort of the topical area that test data media are being used to investigate. And so uh, you can see some of the thematic areas that, that test dates are being applied to better understand. Okay, this is where Neotoma still needs work. Uh, so uh, about 12% of the published peatland paleoecological records are currently in Neotoma, so there's a long, uh, a long way to go. And so as part of this review, the hope is that we can pull that forward. We have about uh, at least 10 to 20 records in hand, and, uh, and as part of this paper, what we're going to do is a, is a direct comparison between the communities in our, in our fossil samples and the communities in our modern data set uh, and, uh, and uh, sort, of, sort of address issues related to no modern analogs and what the effect of that is on our environmental reconstruction. So you can kind of see the ordination there of, uh, of stratigraphic samples and surface samples. And you can see they, 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 they occupy different space there. Um, they, they overlap a lot, but they but certainly the stratigraphic samples are, are over there on the right, and there are things that are not getting preserved well uh, down core. So we've got a bunch of subsequent analyses to basically look at what the impact of that is. Okay, so what's coming next? Um, uh, in the storting uh, sort of category, uh, we plan to upload um, the stratigraphic records in association with this paper. So we're looking at 10 to 20 additional sites. That data is in hand. Uh, the hope is to get that up in, uh, in summer 2023. Uh, then we'll upload the modern samples from South America. We also have the Hawaiian data set ready to go. Uh, and so about 600 samples. And then uh, also going on is a synthesis by the CP group. Julie LaSalle and Nicole Sanderson are doing that. And they hope to have about 50 stratigraphic records, uh, at least uh, hopefully ready for upload in, uh, in the summer as well. Um, and so... We're looking at hopefully by the fall, we're up to 75% of all the published surface samples and about 30% of all the published stratigraphic records. And then uh, in the science category, uh, we uh, we anticipate uh, submitting this uh, this synthesis paper in the in the this summer, and then submission of a South American synthesis paper uh, in the fall uh, or or winter of next year. Uh, and then finally, sort of in the outreach and community uh, engagement uh, category, this is something that uh, I haven't done as much as I'd like, uh, given that uh, we haven't had meetings for a long time. And there's been no test data maybe meeting. There was a virtual one, but, but it was basically like one month notice. Um, and, uh, and so there's been no in-person meeting since before COVID, but uh, the meeting is taking place in Madrid this October. And so I'll be taking the sort of Neotoma show on the road uh, and, uh, and hopefully uh, recruit some additional uh, data stores. Okay. Uh, so uh, if there isn't time for questions, which is what I heard, shoot me an email or, or put something uh, in the chat. A quick comment on questions. I think we're running a little ahead of time. People are doing a great job of doing short presentations. So I think we could.